What's up, Badger fans? Uh, another player in the portal. This is kind of a big one. This is a big pickup for the offense, potentially. Jackson McGowan commits to the Badgers. We're going to do a quick show, talk about it, and why it's important to get more ammunition for Tyler Van Dyke. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Wanted to just kind of a quick show to react to this because basketball's tonight, volleyball's tonight. I didn't want this to get lost in those or intertwined. Uh, the Badgers, this is a really good pickup. Former LSU tight end Jackson McGowan commits to the Badgers. That means we got to sound Fire those the cannons. recruiting cannons. Another one is headed to Madison on Wisconsin. What's up, Cheesehead Bucky? He says, yo, yo. Logan Couch says, we are getting SEC players now. That is awesome. Now I want more. Yeah, that's the problem with the portal, right? It's like going to um, a store for me. It'd be going to like a sports memorabilia store and just being like, okay, I got this great thing, but now give me more. Give me more. You do want to keep getting more in the portal. Um, Kyle Matrix says, fire the cannons. Commandant Clink says, just saw the commit and watch his huddle film. Can't say it blew me away, but we need help at tight end. Robert Sorensen says, got to go to a meeting, but let's go. Cancel the meeting, Robert. Stay here. Stay here with us. You're telling me that meeting is more important than a SEC tight end committing to the Badgers, Robert? Nonsense. Cancel it. All right, let, let's talk about uh, Jackson McGowan. And I think there's there's interesting stuff here. I think this is a, a good player for the Badgers to pick up. It's a position of need. If you look at my board behind me, it literally says ammo for TVD. Like when you go and get a transfer quarter or a transfer portal quarterback, you get a guy like Tyler Van Dyke. You got to go get some weapons for him. You got to get offensive linemen. You got to get receiving weapons. That's what this is. Jackson McGowan is a receiving tight end. 6'4", 235, was a three-star tight end in the 2023 class. Offers from Oklahoma, Auburn, LSU, Iowa, if you're gonna, if, if there's any offer that means anything for tight ends, it's Iowa. Uh, Miami, Florida was in there. So this was a highly recruited kid one year ago. A couple things I like about this. He was originally kind of committed, or not kind of, he was originally committed to Cincinnati. So this, one of the biggest concerns in the portal is what kind of character do these players have? Are you bringing someone in that could hurt the locker room? It's really unique when you can find a player that this staff is really familiar with from the high school recruiting ranks, which means they've taken more time with him. They've got to know him. They know the player. They know the family. They're comfortable with him in the culture. That's an example of this one. This this coaching staff, Coach Nate Letton, the tight ends coach, they really actually know this player because they recruited him and actually got him to commit to Cincinnati in the high school ranks. So that, that to me is a really kind of unique plus on this one. And then Position of need, tight end. We talked about it. it is a tremendous position of need. So you're you're knocking off those those check boxes that you need to outside linebacker. You've got a couple players. Quarterback, you got a player. Tight end, you got a player. And then he brings something to the room that's unique. He is a really good pass catching receiving tight end on film in high school. Right now, that's different. That he hasn't proven it at this level yet. I think a couple things make you feel pretty good about it. The first one is he went to LSU. That is a all no matter what they do, LSU is always a very talented roster. And he played right away. Eight games as a true freshman, played on all the special teams units, kick coverage, punt coverage. That tells you something right there. What is what do coaching staffs do when they they get a, pl a freshman that they really like? They find reps for him on special teams immediately. That's what Wisconsin does. You remember Hunter Wohler, uh, Christian Allegro this year, right? The fact that he played right away in special teams at LSU was in the in Getting snaps played in eight games, that shows you kind of what they thought of him. Um, and then let's talk about how he wins. He In high school, you watch the film, he's a receiving tight end. He's 6'4". He's a 50-50 ball guy, pretty quick off the line of scrimmage. Not great speed. This is not Lance Kendricks. He's he's not that level of athlete. But the ball skills are really impressive. He, he's got a couple of catches on his highlight film. And again, it is a highlight film for a reason. But he's got a couple of catches on his highlight film that are quite frankly, kind of jaw-dropping. He has really good ball skills coming out of high school. Good frame, not huge. He's not a six. He's not like Rob Booker's like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. He's not a huge guy, but he can win 50-50 balls. He can get past kind of that, that initial envelope of tight ends, right? He's faster than a guy like Rucci, for example. He can threaten the seam. He can get past linebackers. You might need to put a safety or a more athletic linebacker on him. And then when you throw the ball up to him, he can catch it. I think it's a great get. I think it's a really, really good get for Wisconsin at A, a position of need. You're getting a player you're familiar with from the high school ranks. You're getting more weapons for Tyler Van Dyke. 
and you're crossing off boxes. So I think it's a great get. Uh, I, I don't see any downside here, and this is a tremendous position of need for the Badgers. We've talked about tight end a bunch. Let's see. Um, yeah, comment on saying, stay with us, Robert. You don't need to go to no meetings. Kyle Matry says, when we flip Booker, this room will be looking better. Yeah, so Rob Booker, I do think we flip him. I've heard some nice smoke there, uh, some of which I've shared, some of which I haven't. I do think we flip Booker. And then you're looking at a tight end group last, our next year who has uh, seed reefs potentially. Tucker Ashcraft's going to be a really good player. He's not going to be a star, but he, he was a guy that would have benefited from a retro year that had to play this year. And then you throw in Grant Steck, who's a four-star, like, all-around tight end. You get Magana, Magane, uh, Jackson Magana, sorry. You get Magana, who is more of that receiving threat. And then if you bring in Rob Booker, you get that athletic X factor. All three bring something different to the room. I think next year's tight end group, it's going to be young still, but it could be really kind of dynamic in two years. Logan Couch says, sorry, it's hard to type. I have a fractured finger. Nah, stay with it. I appreciate you you, you sucking it up, man. Greg Linscombe says, it's a real position of need that we need depth 100%. 100%. This is one of the, the shallowest spots on the, on the roster. Tight end is something Phil Longo, Coach Phil Longo, definitely used a lot at North Carolina. He wasn't able to do that at Wisconsin. Giving him a weapon like this is big. And then giving Tyler Van Dyke again, that another weapon that he can throw to is big. This is from Greg Linscombe. How many years of eligibility does he have left? He was a true freshman last year, so you're getting him for three years potentially. Now, I say potentially because you never know anymore, right? Uh, the NCAA just... Uh, or not the NCAA, a judge just uh, ruled that, you know, a transfer portal player, players that have transferred once can transfer again without restriction. So who knows? But nominally, he has three years left. Commandant Klink says, I need that receiver, but was looking at the portal and most of the top guys are not in Wisconsin's future. This is a lot like NFL free agency that top guys go off the, off the board the first week. So, yes, but I would say that there's more guys. A lot of guys don't come off the board until they have a spot. Right. So, yes, a lot of the guys are off the board, but there's there's going to be other players that are going to come off the board. So don't be surprised if like a receiver comes off the board and commits to I'm just going to say Wisconsin, but commits to some school in two days. What? So a lot of top guys are still going to enter the portal. They haven't yet because they're working out where they're going to go. And you're right. They absolutely need to get a receiver this cycle. A, a tight end is not enough. They need a receiver, maybe two. This is an offense that still desperately needs speed on the outside. We talked about it, especially with a card, quarterback with a big arm like TVD. So I 100% agree. They need that receiver. They haven't got it yet. That's still a big, big need. Let's see. Brian Dotson says, need a running back like Nixon from Oklahoma State. I don't think they need a running back, Brian. I mean, I certainly uh, – I mean – I could be wrong. Like, let me know in the comments if y'all y'all guys think. I, I think running back is deep enough. Um, especially if Chez comes back. You have Chez. You have three freshmen coming in. I thought Jackson Aker and Cade looked fine this year for getting kind of the initial reps in their career. So that's already five, six guys. Nate White's there. Um, I think Chez is coming back. We haven't obviously heard it confirmed, but I think he's coming back. I think that's enough depth. If Chez, Chez doesn't come back, maybe you go find a, a veteran somewhere. But um, – Logan Couch says, let's go get that four-star Alabama defensive line transfer. Yes, saw that offer. He he looks the part. Let, let's really quickly talk about that. What What's the remaining biggest needs here, right? I think outside linebacker you've solved. Uh, I think you could use another linebacker. I think another one might be on the way. I think you need receiver. Tight, our quarterback you've solved. Tight end you've brought a body in. I think you desperately need now defensive line and receiver. Probably an offensive lineman too. I, I, in fact, I would say defense alignment, one, one solid offensive line. You need another offensive line. You need more reinforcements there. The unit wasn't good enough last year and three or four guys have left. Yeah. Coming on clean puts it up your offensive line, defense line. I a hundred percent agree. Uh, I think defense line is the biggest priority though. I, I, I think it's defense. If, if you had to rank the top three, it'd be defensive end, defensive tackle, another defensive lineman, and then receiver offensive line. I'm, I'm just saying, like, the defense line has to get so much better. We can win with the receivers we have, I think, to some degree. They're not great. It's not ideal. I think there's young upside there. There's talent there. You, you're not going to go into battles with the schools on next year's schedule with this defense line and, and win. I think you could potentially do it with this receiver group if, if you upgrade the defense line in other spots. Got to upgrade the trenches. I think that's the, the biggest need. Smo says, I'd still say in their corner. Yeah, I could definitely see the need. If you can find – this is what I would say with that. At any position, if you can upgrade the talent level, you do it, right? If you can find a cornerback that slots into your top four, into your two deep, you do it. 
because it it makes you better it makes you deeper it makes you more resistant resistant to injuries it, it increases the depth but i don't think corner is a huge need uh, maybe i'm banking too much on some of the young players uh growing uh rico home and staying that kind of stuff but yeah if you could go find a corner i, I think that would certainly play that that's definitely gonna make you better Commandant says we need that receiver, but you win the game in the trenches. Agreed. I mean, realistically, you need all of it, right? If, if we're going to talk about it, this is one of those you have to walk and then you have to jog and then you have to run, then you have to sprint. We're not in the sprinting phase yet. The sprinting phase is the national championship phase. Those are the, the schools competing for the national. Wisconsin's not there yet, right? Or maybe in the jogging phase. And in the jogging phase, we have to get better in a lot of spots, but you got to improve the offense line, defense line. You, you just got to do it. Receiver has ask, comes after that. Um, let's go. Greg Linscombe says, how does bringing in several transfers say to those who transferred in last year? Let things play out. Patience. Yeah. Patience is a hard concept in today's college football world for coaches, recruiters, players, college athletes, high school kids, high school coaches, fans, analysts, all of the above. Patience is difficult. I do think, listen, CJ Williams, Tretch, um, there's some young talent at receiver. I think you need an R dude. I've talked about it. I'm not trying to overhype that group. I don't see that same type of young upside talent down the defensive line, for example. I like Jamal Howard. I don't know if there's a lot there other than that. Commandant says we need help most everywhere. I'm not turning down anyone who wants to come here. Yeah, anyone who makes a team better you get. But if you you also don't have it on, obviously, and Commandant knows this, you don't have an unlimited amount of NIL funds, right? So you do have to prioritize. And the prioritization needs to come in the trenches in that receiver. Uh, Kyle Matry, Tyrell Henry looking elsewhere. I like this film a lot. I, I don't think we know for sure yet. That's the, the Michigan State receiver. I, I don't think we know for sure. I like this film too, but I don't think he is a difference maker necessarily. I think he would come in and slot in in that top four, which is important. Like that makes your team better. That makes your room better. DA Wolf says, this is fun. It's hard to lose games this year, but the excitement is real. If we win seven next year with that schedule, that would be a good season. Nine plus, and it means... We have a great year. Yeah, if you want nine plus next year, DA, that's an incredible year. I, I don't think we will. I'm just going to go on the record. I, I don't think we win nine games next year with the schedule and the amount of work this roster needs. But if you you could win eight, seven or eight games next year and be a much better team and just have better losses, right? Uh, and I think that's probably the, the goal. Get to eight and four next year with a much tougher schedule. That'd be awesome. And maybe maybe that sounds like um, I'm trying to sell the expectations short. I don't know. That's a tough schedule, man. That is a tough schedule. Uh, Commandant says, uh, unlimited NIL funds. What happens to that big check you're going to write out, Ryan? Yeah, I'm still writing it. <laughs> I'm still writing that big check. Um, Brian Dotson says, who's playing center next year? Should we just say it? Could it be a former transfer from LSU? Could it be Renfro? <laughs> like, why, why couldn't it be Renfro? I, I don't know. I honestly have no clue. I, I have no clue who's playing center next year. I'm guessing if he's healthy, it's going to be Renfro. Like, we haven't heard anything really. They brought him in for a reason. <laughs> Maybe the reason was just one year in advance. I don't know. They, I think they need another body there, though, obviously. you got to go find another interior offensive lineman. I think that's a spot I would look at in the portal. Can you find somebody who could play center, who could play guard? I think there's a, there's a very obvious spot there. There's a hole there. So, let's see. Red Mike says, wait for bowl games to run out. Watch Watch for who scurries into the transfer portal, who leaves for the transfer portal. Yeah, there's going to be a lot more movement. And don't forget, this is just the first portal window. Come spring, there's another one, right? When this flurry of young players gets on a roster, you might see more people enter the portal, more people come. This is definitely not over. Um, let's go. Slim Lewis says, this pickup has potential, but is way more similar to getting Locker, CJ Williams, not much college experience, wasn't good enough to start an elite program. All fair. Yeah. Like, that's all fair. Like, I he he's a potential pickup. He's not somebody that's proven it. I like the high school film a lot. He had a great offer list. But Slim's dead on with this point. Like, he, he needs to prove it. He needs to to prove it at this this system, in this in this environment, in this ecosystem. Now, I, I think he's going to be given that opportunity because the cupboard is kind of bare at tight end, right? LSU is traditionally a much more talented, deeper roster. He was able to get on the field right away at LSU, which I think is impressive. That, that bodes well. But now he's got to prove it at Wisconsin. Again, I loop back, though, to the fact that 
Fickle, Letton, they really know this kid because they recruited him out of high school and got him into Cincinnati before he decommitted to go to LSU. So there's more knowledge, background knowledge on him than there have been on other transfer kids, which I think bodes well for what they think of him, right? They have a, they just have a deeper background with him. And I think that bodes well for it. Um, Christian Gross says, who do you want coaching the receivers? You know, I don't know. I haven't put a lot of brain power into that. I tell you the characteristics of who I want. I want an elite recruiter. I think there's a couple spots where you really want dynamic recruiters because they're less involved in the game planning and the X's and O's. I think like running back receiver, you still want real coaches there, obviously, but I think your receiver coach has to be one of your better, more dynamic, probably younger um, recruiting guys. So that's what I would look for a younger up and coming coach with recruiting connections. And yeah, I, I mean, that's what I'm hoping for, but I don't have a name. I honestly haven't really thought of names too much. Um, Oscar says, who's playing center against LSU? Yeah, I guess Renfro's not going to slot into that one, Oscar. I don't know. I mean, that is an interesting question. Let me think about that, and I'll get back to you. Maybe maybe Renfro's finally healthy enough to play. I mean, he got some reps in practice, and he's been shut down the entire year. I think he still exists. So that's that's a good question. Dylan Bayer says, are we going with Jack Nelson next year at left tackle? I think Nelson probably goes into the draft. Uh, that would be my guess, Dylan. Joseph S. says, does TVD have a veteran tight end he can pull to the badge from the portal? Jackson is talented, but only eight snaps. I'm not sure on that one. I think I think they're going to count on – listen, there's some internal development. Like, Tucker Ashcraft's going to be better next year. He was kind of thrust into this role as a freshman. I think at most programs he would have redshirted a year and come – he's going to be a good player. I like Tucker Ashcraft. He was just a little raw this year. I think next year he'll be fine as a true sophomore. He's still have JT Seagreaves in the program. That's an athletic guy. He has to kind of come together. He's more of a multi-sport guy in high school. But JT Seagreaves could be a guy to watch. Rucci could come back. Gives you that blocking tight end. And then you have Steck coming in who's, in terms of tight ends, true freshman tight ends, he's going to be positioned to play because he's a 6'5", 250-pound dude. Like, Grant Steck's a dude. So he's big enough to play right away. If it clicks, we'll have to see. And then you're bringing in Jackson. Um, I think the room is deeper than, than we're giving it credit for. With the addition of Steck, um, with the addition of Jackson McGonin, but going um, with that, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. I did just kind of want to do a quick show. There was no ad reads on this one. This is just a quick show. Talk about the pickup. I think it's a big one. I think it's a good one. It's a potential play. He still has to prove it, but you need to get weapons for Tyler Van Dyke and you needed to upgrade the tight end room. I think potentially you did both of these on this pickup. So the Grogan says locked on at work. Slim Lewis says I'm super psyched about Tyler Van Dyke. Kid has mega talent. Yeah, he has a lot of talent. Again, he's not the perfect quarterback, but he has a lot of talent. And sometimes as a fan, it's okay to dream on the potential. Like sometimes it's okay to dream on the what if it clicks? Because sometimes it does. Most of the time it doesn't. But sometimes it does. And if it does, he's going to be really good for us. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up there on Wisconsin. Big pickup for the Badgers. We're going to talk more tonight, tomorrow, basketball game, volleyball. Um, talk about some of the guys that went into the portal and kind of trace back their lineage in the program. Anyway, on Wisconsin, thank you all so, so much. Let's go.